Lord's already been good this morning. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Ladies keep singing these songs about going home and flying away, and I'm about to go into cardiac arrest. Over here. <laughs> Tell you, I'm homesick. Amen. Amen. I'm ready to go be around the throne for eternity. That's right. Yeah. I mean, if you ain't looking forward to that, you got a weird attachment to that's this. Right. That's, that's right. That's right. Hell hole we live in out here. That's all I'm going to call it. I don't, I don't know what else to call it. But uh, let's grab a few souls and take with us. How's that? Amen. Yes. You got your Bible. We're going back to the second book of Peter. We keep using this text. This is, um, we got two more pieces of furniture we will deal with, and that will conclude our taber tabernacle series. Or we got one this morning, and then two more after this is what I meant to say, and I don't. I hope everyone's enjoyed it. I know I've enjoyed preaching about it. Um, I know it kind of this. The past few weeks has been more of a teaching preaching, but it, it does us some good to go a little deeper sometimes uh, than just the surface or face value of things. And uh, we've been dealing with the tabernacle, and, and anyone that doesn't know the tabernacle, just like everything else in the Old Testament, was a picture or symbolic of something to come, or something that was going to take place. Everything you see is a picture of something you don't see. So. Uh, keep that in your mind as we continue to go through this series, but uh, we'll go to the book of Second Peter, read one verse, verse 13. Yea, I think it mean as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you this morning, God, for all you've already done, Father Lord, the way you've moved on some people, Father Lord, and they've brought burdens to the altar. God, Lord, I thank you for people that are willing to do that and obedient to the Spirit of God this morning, Father Lord. I pray that that type of obedience would be seen throughout all the congregation that is assembled here this morning, Father Lord, that if you move on them, God, that they will respond, they will listen, they will heed, Father, they will surrender, whatever it is they're in need of this morning. God, I know there's at least one that's lost in our midst this morning. We've, we've had with us for years now, God. Lord, I pray that you would touch them with the Holy Ghost of God, Father Lord, and convict them. God, let them see that there is a Savior that loves them, Father Lord, a Savior that hung on a cross, was buried and rose again three days later, Father Lord, that we might have eternal life this morning. God, I pray for anyone else that may be lost this morning, Father Lord, that today would be the day that, God, they would see that you're bigger than anything else out here in this old world, Father Lord, that you love them unconditionally and died for them this morning, Father Lord. I pray you would help us throughout the next 30 or 40 minutes this morning, God, Lord, help me loose my tongue. Give me unction of the Holy Ghost this morning and let the Holy Ghost rule and reign in this congregation this morning, Father Lord. Give us liberty to preach, liberty to hear, and liberty to act this morning, Father Lord. I love you. I praise you. I ask for it in the name of Jesus and by his precious blood. And everyone said amen and amen. You're welcome to be seated in the presence of God this morning. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Everybody aware of that this morning. Amen. Not liberty to sin, but liberty to praise and worship God. All right, this week we go in, We last week we entered into the Holy of Holies and we looked at the table of showbread uh, and now we look to our left and we see the golden lampstand. Uh, my wife, I think, the one been hanging those up back there on the wall. If you can't see them real good from back there, they'll be there. Uh, the golden lampstand, we've, we've looked at everything being symbolic in the tabernacle and I think uh, the Lord has done a pretty good job of showing us the symbolic of the things in the tabernacle and what it represented. Now the one we're going to deal with this morning, the golden candlestick, or the golden lampstand, if you will, is one of the most important things we've got to have in our lives. And it is a sim symbolic picture of the Holy Ghost this morning. That's right. Three of you believe we need the Holy Ghost? Amen. I said it's symbolic to the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. And we've got to have the Holy Ghost Amen. today. We need the Holy Ghost here when we have service. Right. We need the Holy Ghost in us when we leave this service. Right. We need the Holy Ghost with us when we go to our job. We need the Holy Ghost with us when we go to Walmart. We need the Holy Ghost with us when we lay down our head on our pillow at night. We need the Holy Ghost. Okay. Now that is a picture of power. Everyone understands the Holy Ghost is power. Right? Uh, it give out the light. That, that, that was what happened in here in the, the tabernacle was it give out the light. The light company, everyone used to call it what? The power company. That's right. Amen? Amen. If you noticed, it was a seven-pronged candlestick that was made out of one piece, yet it had seven parts. Now, I'm probably going to blow someone's mind today, but because people don't study their Bibles, they don't know these things. You ever read about the Holy Spirit having seven spirits this morning? That's right. That's right. 
You can go to Revelation 3, 1, Isaiah 11, 1 through 2, Revelation 4, 5, and Revelation 5, 6, and read about the seven parts that make up the Holy Ghost as well. You said, Preacher, I'm just now getting on board with the Trinity God. <laughs> Amen. The Holy Ghost, the, the Father, and the Son. I'm just now getting on board with that. There's seven spirits also within the Holy Spirit this morning. And, and I'll have these notes up uh, back there if you want to copy them down and check me. I ain't lying to you this morning, but I want you to... Get point number one. The golden lampstand was set up over and against the table of showbread. That's important to us this morning because what was the table of showbread? It was a picture of God's Word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Six loaves here, six loaves there, looking like a picture of 66. Your Bible's got 66 books this morning. It's a picture of things to come, a picture of things that we are dwelling in and seeing right now. And now we've got the loaf... The, the, the golden lampstand putting light on the bread. That's right. You say, where are you going with that preacher? It gives light to the bread. Amen. You say, what puts light on the bread this morning? Greek scholarship? <laughs> Got bad news for you, no. What puts light on the bread, preacher? Uh, arche archaeological findings this morning? No. Got bad news for you. That ain't in either. Oh, well, it must be, it must be, it must be a master's in theology or a bachelor of divinity that puts light on the bread. No, sir, no, ma'am. What puts light on the bread is the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost alone. That's what's happened to this generation. We asking God and praying to God and asking Him to give us the spirit right. of understanding that will bring us wisdom and revelation of the book. We think we can find something better all while it's been sitting here for a little over 400 years right. now waiting for someone to get a burden and a desire to understand it and pick it up and be blessed because God, the Holy Ghost, shines the light on the Word and that's what gives us understanding to God. You can read books, you can look at things, and God, God let you glean off that stuff. I'm not saying that. But what the, you can do all the studying you want, but most verses in this Bible, you are never going to understand until you live through them, brother. Right. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I put that in the bulletin here a while back. You think the Greek or the original is going to help, help you with that, to understand that? No, it's not going to help you to understand that. The only way you're going to learn that you can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth you, is when you get in situations where there's no one else to rely on except Christ and Christ alone. The Greek, the Hebrew, the originals, the modern translations ain't going to shed any more light on something as simplistic as I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me today been here all the time. We don't need a new book. We need to understand the one we've got. That's right. That's right. Now I want us to look at the picture this morning. You would come out of broad daylight, right? We went in last week and we've been in the courtyard and now you walk out of bright daylight into a dark tabernacle. Amen. Amen. All that's lit by is candles. Amen. Amen. You ever went outside and the sun would be real bright and you come into a pretty dark or and dim place? Yes, sir. It's yes, hard sir. to see. That's right. That's right. I got news for you this morning. There's a lot of Christians still struggling with us today. Right. But as a baby Christian, that's par for the course. That's right. yes. When you first get saved, you're just like you, you're just walking by faith, man. You don't know nothing. It's kind of dim. It's a little bit hard to see. But can I tell you that lampstand will give you all the light you need today yeah. if you just rely on Him and focus on Him and trust Him. Yes. He will give you everything you need today. Right. Y'all remember when Jesus healed that blind man and it was only the only miracle recorded where Jesus did it in two steps. He healed him and he said, I just see men as trees walking. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, then he, and then he did it again and he finally seen. That was a picture of baby Christians. Right. Now, they, some Christians have been saved for 40 years that need to get out of the toddler stage, that need yeah. to get out of the baby yeah. stage. Amen. Quit seeing men as trees walking and see everything like it's supposed to be. Yeah. But we can't get that today. That's why so many of you have been in your little Facebook debates and dealing with these people. It's because they're still seeing men as trees walking. That's right. They won't get into Scripture. They won't let the, the golden lamp stand, the Holy Ghost, shed any light on it. And so they're what the Bible literally says. They're tossed to and from with every wind of doctrine. Anything that blows through, they latch onto it. But Charlie Manson could come in, come through and say, yep, I, the, what I'm doing right now is miraculous. It's a healing. It's of God. And people would just chomp at it at the bit. They'd ignore the fact that he was a murderer, a fornicator, and all that stuff. And just say, yep, because he did something miraculous, it must be of God. Just because something different and something maybe that looks miraculous happens doesn't mean it's of God. I shared with the church here a while back about the Egyptian magicians. They did the same things Moses and Aaron did, but yet they were some of the most godless 
heathens that ever lived. Amen. Counterfeit. Amen. I don't feel like I need to preach on that too long, but let me tell you something this morning. You'll get adjusted if you'll just spend some time with God. That's right. Right. The key to fixing the hurt eyeballs from the bright sunlight and not being able to really make sense out of everything wasn't to run back out into the courtyard. That's right. That's right. It was to just sit in there and spend some time with God. Amen. Can I tell you, if you'll just sit down and spend some time with God, things will become clear. Amen. Okay, everybody on board with that? That's right. Yes. Now I want to help somebody this morning. When you go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, Paul writes, Know ye not your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Amen. Amen. It says our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Right? Now, this blessed me. I hope this helps somebody else. If you ever look at a picture of the tabernacle from the outside, it was just, just a bunch of black lamb skins and ram skins and different goat skins, um, black and gray hair just covering the thing. It, wasn't, it was dull. It was dim. There wasn't much to look at. But when you went inside, I don't know how many of you studied about the inside, but it was fine twine needlework of blue, purple, yes. scarlet, silver, yes. and gold yes. with cherubim and palm yes. leaves. I, I got good news for us yes. this morning. Yes. I'm not much to look at, never have been, never yes. will be. Some of you don't look no better either today. Amen? Amen. 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 It ain't about the outside today. It's about the Holy Ghost that lives yes. in us today. Amen. And He's the one that's come inside and cleaned us yes. up and made something out of us today. Yes. It's nothing about the outside today. Yeah, we got to have a testimony. Yeah, we need to walk in holiness. We need to walk upright. But i got news for you, brother. Ain't none of you in here going to judge me come judgment day. Right. God's going to look at me and say, oh, yeah, He's blood-bought. My Holy Ghost dwells there. He's one of mine this morning. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Just dirty, filthy, covered in the world. And I know we don't need to go roll around in sin. Don't twist my words and take it for that. What I'm saying is we get marred up and we ain't much to look at and we ain't very attractive. There's nothing about me that would ever make God look down from heaven and say, yeah, I've got to have that one. But God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life this morning. He did it because He loves you. But there is wrath, like Jeremy taught. Yes, right. It's not all love and no judgment. There is a judgment that comes. Amen. You've got to be one of His. That's right. I'm just thankful this morning. None of you guys may be getting this, but I'm just thankful that when the Lord looks down, He don't see shame. Amen. Amen. That's right. He sees the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, oh, making yourself equal with God? No, His imputed righteousness, His blood is what covers me. That's what God looks at when He sees the same child of God Amen. is His Son's righteousness. Because our righteousness, the Bible says, is His filthy rags. There's not one righteous, no, not one, the Scripture says. But I need to remind us today that we ain't going to heaven based on what we've done. We're going to heaven based on what He did at Calvary. And when God looks at you, yeah, you may not be the best saint or the best Christian that ever lived, but God says you're one of his today. Amen. Brother Gary, I've had a lot of people call me a lot of bad names, but I'm King's kid today. Amen. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Jesus. When you get over to Leviticus 24 2, he said you're to cause those lamps to burn continually. Amen. That thing was to burn and to burn and to burn. Amen. The priest was to keep it dressed so the power never went out. That's right. You get where I'm going yet? A lot of churches has let the power go out. That's right. That's right. God help us to never let the power right. go out. Amen. And it's a little old church that don't mount to the hill of beans in the world's eyes. And even in a lot of churches' eyes, we're, 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 we're the problem. That's right. But the way I feel today, I know we're not the problem. That's right. I know that God dwelleth here with us this morning. I don't doubt I give a rip less what these people think that get their feelings hurt because they want to be attached to their bottle or they want to be attached to the dope or they want to be attached to sexual sin. They think we're a bunch of bigots that just hate everybody. No, I try to preach on that stuff because the scripture says it. And number two, because I love you. And I don't want to see you go to hell today. The world sure has got a twist up, jacked up view of what love is. That's right. Preacher, just tell me you love me and that everything I'm doing is just fine and that there's nothing wrong. I would hate you if I did that. That's right. That's right. If you were not saved and I didn't have the gall to tell you you weren't saved and I didn't have the gall to point to you the sins that keep people from getting saved, you can consider me your biggest enemy. That's, That's right. right. Amen. 
Because I don't love you enough to warn you about hell. I don't warn you enough about fleeing from the wrath to come. I don't love you enough to warn you about the last days and when God makes a new heavens and a new earth and people's been cast off into a lake of fire where they shall burn continually. That's love today if I warn you of that. That's not hate. That's love. That's right. The problem is, is you've sat in front of the TV, read newspapers till you're blue in the face, and you watch all this trash Heli Weird puts out, and you think love is something that's really not. That's right. That's right. We're all jacked up. Amen. But we all got a Savior that's right. That's right. that loves us. That's right. But if you won't take His love, buddy, you ain't in a fold. That's right. You won't repent and get right with God, you ain't in a fold this morning. That's right. The thing was to burn and to burn. The priest was to keep it dressed so the power never went out. You know why me and Brother Gary preach the way we do? You know why we're honest? You know why we preach out of the book? You know why we took a stand for that book and that book alone? Because we're trying to keep this thing dressed so that the fire just burns and burns Amen. and burns and burns and burns. Amen. I don't want to come here and be dead. Amen. I don't know how to be nice about this, but I don't want it turning into a Southern Baptist church. Yep. See, I'll pick on Baptists too. I will. I've, I've said in them, buddy, I don't want it to just be all reformed and we're dignified and can't nobody shout and can't nobody raise a hand and can't nobody do nothing. It, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. 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 If God saved you, be excited. Get up and shout. Amen. Do something. Amen. Blows my ever-loving mind. That's why me and Brother Gary, me and Jerry, all of us that teach out of this book, that's why we do that. That's right. To keep it dressed so it'll Amen. keep burning and burning. And burn. Look at all these young. All you young and stand up for a minute this morning. Every one of you. I'm gonna pick on you. Stand up real quick. You know what me and brother Gary, brother Jeremy, and some of us preach and teach the way we do for these young ones right here. That's right. That's right. Amen. I love every adult in the sanctuary this morning, but my focus is these. That's right. That's right. Because one day, if the Lord doesn't return, this is who it's going to be left to. That's right. That's right. I ain't raising Christian progressive liberals that preach hyper grace and come out here in skinny Woo! jeans showing Amen. every nook and cranny off. Right. Carrying, right. ca carrying a book around they don't even believe. That's not what I'm raising. Right. Yeah. We're trying to raise kids that believe what God said is true. Yeah. That He is their Savior. He is the Redeemer. Yes. That's what we're trying to do in here today. Yeah. You call that brainwashing? Y'all can sit down. Thank you. You call that brainwashing? Go up, leave them out here and see who brainwashes them. Yeah. That's right. The devil sitting out there tickling his fingers together. Just love to get his claws right. in all these youngins. And as long as I got breath in me, he ain't taking them. Amen. Amen. Some of you adults, I got no, I got no say. But as long as these youngins are here, they're mine, Brother Gary's and Jeremy's, as far as I'm concerned. Amen. And Sister Nikki and Brother Mike, those that lead them. I, I'm not saying we take over your rights as a parent, but they will hear what is preached from this book Amen. when they're in the sanctuary. That's right. That's right. I, I'm trying to be as spiritual as I can today, but if you don't like it, there's 14 other churches that will lull you to hell right. all day long. That's right. Come on, preach it. Go get you some of it. See how it makes you feel. Right. Make your body feel good, your flesh. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I lived a life one time yielded to the flesh. I can, if I had time, I'd tell you where it got me. It wasn't in a good place. Amen. Burn and burn. Keep it dressed so the power never went out. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. 1 Thessalonians 5 Quench not the Spirit. Amen. This lampstand represents the Spirit of God. I dealt with it primarily in the beginning of shining light on the Word of God. But can I tell you, the Spirit of God's got so many more jobs than just that. Yeah, that's right. I mean, He guides us, He leads us, He convicts us, He gives us words in the hour we need it. I mean, He does all kinds of stuff this morning. Yes. But we can't quench Him and we can't grieve Him this morning. Right. You know what grieves the Spirit of God? A bunch of dead, backslidden Baptists that won't shout. That's right. That grieves God. That's right. I've been there, done that. I apologize to Brother Gary here a while back. It, it, it grieves the Spirit of God. It quenches the Spirit of God. That's right. Buddy, I know people that I can see walking into this building, not, not with us today, but in past that I've dealt with. I can see them walking from the parking lot, and I can already feel the Holy Ghost just being quenched the fire out of us. Yeah. And, and greed from, from just the doom, the gloom, the misery, the defeat. I know we got problems. I know we feel defeated sometimes. But get in here and give God the glory. Yeah. Let, yeah. Leave it to Him, and you'll get victory today. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. So everybody looking for victory in all their own places. They done sung where the victory's at. Amen. In Jesus. That's yeah. right. You remember uh, Samuel in 1 Samuel 3 3? He let the lamp burn out one time. No lamp. There's a lot of churches. They ain't got no lamp burning That's in right, them. Right. I think I figured out why the Catholic Church has so many candles in it. Because the Holy Ghost ain't there and they're trying That's to get right. their own light in there. <laughs> I picked on the Baptist. I'm going to go to the Catholics. 
but he let it burn out one time. He wasn't taking care of the lamp, and the power went out. That's right. That's right. See, really, a lot, a lot of this, this hinges on people like me and Gary, our teachers, those that are, that are in a, a position of teaching today. A lot of that falls on our shoulders. But can I tell you, congregation, you're just as much Amen. able Amen. to help keep Come the on. power going here. Right. I'm Come talking on. spiritual power. Come on. That's right. As me, as Brother Gary, as anybody out here. That's right. That's right. You, you, you need to bring that in here with you. That's Come right. Amen. Morning. That's right. Amen. We, we, we sound, I'm going to brag on us. We sounded real good this morning during the singing. Amen. I can hear a lot of people out there singing. Amen. Can I tell you, that makes me feel a lot different than when nobody Amen. don't sing. Amen. That's right. That's right. You say, preacher, we're not supposed to operate off feelings. You've worn that. Yeah, but I've told you a hundred times when you're operating in the Spirit of God, you will feel things. That's right. So that's where you get it twisted. We don't come in here and try to work something up. We're trying to sing and pray something down. That's right. And you can't help but feel that emotionally. It moves on you. It that's touches right. you. That's right. And that's how I felt this morning. That's, I mean, part of it, I was sitting because I was still feeling a little off from yesterday. But a lot of it was just because I just wanted to sit there and just feel Amen. the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. See, when we all participate, it makes a big difference this morning. That's right. It makes a big difference. The Holy Ghost, I said, it works in correlation with the Word of God. May we never put the lamp down. That's right. See, I know I said it's the Spirit of God, but David also said, Thy word is a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. That's right. Yes. You realize this book's alive. That's, That's right. right. You know why? Because God breathed That's it. Right. Yes. God formed man out of the dust and breathed into him the breath of life. That's right. And Adam became a living being. That's right. Yes. These are God breathed words. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's why no matter how hard they try, they can't shake the book. That's right. That's right. Never happens. Never going to happen. Right. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall endure forever. That's right. It will not happen. Yeah. I don't care how many backslidden reprobates take after it and try to replace it. It won't happen. To Preach them. it. You say, you, you a prophet? No, I just believe God. <laughs> he said it'll endure forever. Bless God, it'll endure forever. That's right. I don't care if all hell assails it. I don't care if everybody comes up against it. It will endure forever. That's right. I recommended y'all a book Wednesday night. I'm telling you. Some of you don't like to read, but it do you some good sometimes to read something. Amen. That book I read was a blessing to me. Amen. To see the bloodshed, to see the martyrs, to see the history, to see what all took place so we can hold this Bible on our lap today. It'll make you appreciate it a little bit more. Amen. Amen. Nah, preacher, i got to catch the next Netflix series. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what God wants you to sit around and do with all your free time. Is watch that hell they vomit up 24 hours a day. I like what Ruckman said. He said, if all you do is sit in front of the boob tube, you're a boob. I've been there and done that. It makes you dumber. It really does. You think it's enlightening you, but it actually dumbs you down. Because there's always a plan of action behind what you're watching. Always. It's always got something slighted to it. I'm not preaching you can't go home and watch your television, but if you're not willing to seek the things of God, and you're not willing to spend time with God, and you're not willing to just try to get wisdom and understanding from God above Netflix and all the hell, hell weird pumps out and pumps your, your, your kids full of, you got a problem today. That's right. That's right. A baby that don't eat has got something wrong with it. That's right. That's right. We're to desire the sincere milk of the Word. That's right. That's right. I don't know who the youngest kid is we got here. Probably Evander, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. See, when he's just a little baby, if he if he'd have brought it, come in here three weeks after he was born, and Jimmy said, "I don't know what's wrong with him. He ain't eating. He, he won't eat. He hasn't ate." The first thing we do is try to get him to a doctor and figure out what's wrong with That's him. Right. That's right. You think it's any different for you as a Christian today? Amen. Amen. You don't think some of us don't need to get up here and come to the physician and say, God, help me. I've got something wrong with me. I don't desire to eat. I'm malnourished spiritually. I don't spend any time in your word. I don't spend any time looking for you and seeking you above wisdom above, or above rubies and all the treasures of the earth. Help me, physician. There's something wrong with me. Amen. I'd say if we was all honest, we'd be stacked up here like cordwood. Amen. Amen. I'd say if we were being honest, most of us got a real jacked up appetite. Yes. Amen. It don't take much, buddy. I, I, I've been on both sides of the spectrum today. Yep. And all it takes is just a little bit of foot over there at the gates of Sodom. That's what I'm calling Heli Weird today. Yep. Amen. And it appeals to your flesh. Don't act like I don't know. I love a good shoot 'em up cowboy picture. I love a lot of it. Everyone knows I love Andy Griffith. I think there's actually something wholesome to it, but there was still an agenda behind it. That's right. right. I can yeah. see parts and pieces of it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
if you want to understand this word of God today, you're going to have to have the lights on. Amen. Yep. You're going to have to have the lights That's on. Right. That's right. We we want the power of the power of God in our church. We're going to have to have the power company flip the switch. Amen. 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 We ain't going to switch in this sanctuary, do we? Everyone knows what a light switch looks like, right? Yeah. You ever had one out of the wall and wired it up? You say, no, I haven't. Well, let me tell you how it works. There's two wires that run to that. A negative and a power. In a neutral, there's three wires. Hmm. <laughs> Everybody get that? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. It's not even in my notes. You got a ground, you got a power, and you got a, a neutral or a negative, whatever. Neutral's different. Neutral and ground, I think, is the same, whatever. But there's three wires that run to the back of that thing. That's right. Yeah. Man, I feel good. I feel good. Yeah. Amen. 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 There's three wires that run to the back of that switch. And there's something there that breaks the circuit to turn it on and off. Yep. You got that? Yep. Them light switches back there, someone could go over there and flip them off. But that don't change the fact that the power is still sitting there at that switch. That's right. That's right. If you want the power to come on, you got to walk over there and flip the switch That's on. That's right. That's right. See Romans 8, 39? If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Some people teach that you don't get the Holy Ghost when you get saved. I don't know how you couldn't. Because if you don't, have, if you got saved and the Holy Ghost didn't come until two weeks later, but you died before your two weeks, you're not any of His. You're in hell. That's right. But I'm just telling you this much right now: the power company has done turned the power on. The power's there; it's readily available. You, we, we can have as much up. We can leave these lights on from now to doomsday if we want, as long as we can afford it. But it don't cost you nothing with God. This Amen. Amen. You know people's problem today. They've got the light, they've got the power into the switch, but they won't get off off their lazy hind end, and we, we've all right. falter and stumble. Yes. But it's, let's call it what it is. We get lazy in the yep. Lord. That's right. And we won't walk over there and flip the switch. We yeah. won't get down and flip the switch. That's right. That's right. We won't get up and flip the switch. That's right. We won't do nothing. And the power's just resting there all the time, just That's waiting. Right. God's saying, yes. here I am. Yep. Here I am. That's right. You want more of it? Come flip it. Come get yeah. it. Amen. Amen. See, I really love the candles, the, the, the lampstand shining light on the Word of God. That's very important for you. The natural man receiveth not the things of God, neither can he understand them because he is spiritually discerned. Without the Holy Ghost shedding light on the Word of God, you're not going to get much of it. That's right. And I've told you a hundred times, the only part of the Bible a lost person needs to understand is the gospel. That's right. You don't need to know the doctrines of baptism. You don't need to know the doctrines of, of this and, and, and the deep things of God. There's no point in knowing that. Right. If you held bound with a hammer bound, you ain't going to get to go stand before God at the great white throne judgment and say, yeah, Lord, but I studied the doctrines of baptism and I knew it real well. Turn away from me. I never knew you. Find right. your hand and foot, cast them in a lake of fire. you got to get saved first. That's right. you got to get born again first. That's and then right. when you seek God, see, here's what I said, why I said what I said. I'm not done. But it's not that God doesn't indwell people with the Holy Ghost till sometime after they get saved. It's there because right. you've got to flip the switch. Yes. You gotta start seeking after God. You gotta start doing what you're called to do, what God has led you to do. You gotta spend time in the Word. You gotta spend time in prayer. And bless God, somebody help me. You gotta spend time in the house of God. Amen. 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 I get so sick of people that ain't faithful to God wondering why me, preacher, why does God let this happen? You ever try just spending time with him first? Yes. Yep. Amen. If my kids don't want nothing to do with me, it's they're gonna be real hard pressed to see me just blessing their socks off. How much more our Heavenly Father that loved us so much He sent His Son to die for us. Amen. He sent Him to die for us today. <coughs> Whoever's making their way up here, go ahead and make your way up here because I'm not done. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm wanting you to really think about this this morning. It's our job to keep the candle, the lampstand dressed so it never burns out. Yep. Yep. That's right. You understand that correlation today. Yep. That still works today as a new born again believer, as an old saint of God. It's your job to keep dressing the thing so the light doesn't burn out. Yep. Amen. God said it's there if you want it. But are you willing to sacrifice what it takes to keep the, to keep the power on? That's right. That's right. That's right. Can I tell you I was really blessed Wednesday how many people supported the fast in the church? Amen. And can I tell you I believe without a shadow of a doubt God did some things through that? Amen. Amen. I'm not, I'm not going to pick on anyone in here this morning or call them out, but some people had some good test results come back, and I know God has already blessed them for what the church was going to do. Amen. I don't doubt that today. That's right. So if you have a need this morning, if you need the, God to, you say, God, I need, I need to flip the switch on in my life. I need, to, I need the power turned on. 
You come up here and ask God for it. What page are we singing? Page 339. It is well with my soul. 339. If you've got a need this morning, I invite you to come. God don't want us to be powerless and helpless without any strength this morning. He wants us to have the power of God. You hear your loss this morning? God would love to save you too. God would love to save your soul and make you a new creature in Christ. <coughs> Who's going to come to the power company today? Say, Lord, I need more of the Holy Ghost in my life. I don't try to push people to the altar, but I'm telling you right now, this is one thing this church should be broken, burdened, and after today is more of the power of the Holy Ghost in their life. I'm just firmly convinced this morning we can't get through nothing without the Holy Ghost. Not in a good way, not in a way that's peaceful and joyous. Where we can shout the victory in the middle of it. That comes from the Holy Ghost to God. So Lord, I don't I, I, I try to read my Bible, but it just don't make sense. If you're here and you're saved this morning, you need God to Put that lamp stand light on it. Shed light on it. Is it well with your soul this morning? You standing out there in them pews, is it well with your soul? If you was to leave earth today, God forbid this happen to anyone, but you was to leave earth today, would you be saying it as well? Or would you say, oh no, I've made a mistake. God just been dealing with me all the time and I just rejected it and rejected it and rejected it. Don't wait for some convenient season because I got news for you this morning, honey. It ain't going to come. That convenient season never happens. That's right, amen. Now is the day of salvation. Today That's is right. the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. How long are you going to play games with God and think you can continue to run? It was Johnny Cash sang that song that said you can run on for a long time, but sooner or later God will cut you down. That's true. You may get to run for 40, 50 years, but eventually you're going to stand before God. Still time if anyone's got a need. <coughs> I love our church. I think we do great. But can we use more power, more of the power of God? Absolutely. Everybody can. There's no such thing as too much power, church. No such thing as too much power. That may be true in a, a physical. You may have too much power wired up to something and fry it. That ain't the way it works in the realm of God today. Yep. I, I pray he'd give me so much power and fry me, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Wear me out for the ministry, Lord. Whatever you got to do, burn me up here. Because I ain't going to burn when I leave. So, might as well just use me. Amen. Amen. All minds free for we dismiss. Amen. Come back tonight. Hear what Brother Gary's got for us. I'm looking forward to it. I know he had some things he was dealing with this week and this and that. And he told me God gave him a message through it. So, I got a feeling that's going to be one of the messages you ain't going to want to miss. Amen. Man goes through something and God gives him a message through it. That's usually a message Amen. you definitely don't want to miss. That's right. Amen. So, Come back tonight. Here, here's some good preaching for once. That's all I got to say. If all minds are free, uh, who wants to close us in prayer? Why don't one of you young ones close us in prayer? Mason, Mason you're going to dismiss us in prayer? Go ahead, buddy. Amen. Amen.